Okay, and you know what my favorite thing about going to a county fair is the sweet stuff. And I'm not talking about the sugary candy sweet stuff. No, I am talking about the fried sweet stuff. However, if you're taking your family of five to the fair, not only do we have to pay for admission and to ride the rides, then it costs money to buy everyone their own elephant ear or funnel cake. So I'm gonna share with you how I make it at home for way less and it's so good. And I have gotten to the point where I actually like my elephant ears way better than I buy them somewhere else because I can put as much butter on as I want. I can put as much cinnamon and sugar as I want. I can fry them more, fry them less. You get to make it exactly how you want it because I like them more doughy than my husband likes them more crispy. And you can't put enough cinnamon and sugar on mine and he likes it light. So when you make them at home, you can customize them, spend way less money, and your satisfaction is way increased. So I hope you stick around, see how we make completely from scratch elephant ears, and then I do use a kit to make funnel cakes, but it's so easy and I highly recommend it. And I can promise you, after you make them a few times, you won't see the value in buying them. Except, I mean, convenience has its place in the world, but I love to make funnel cakes and elephant ears, and I hope after watching this video, you give them a try yourself. So I have this little Presto Fry Daddy. It is deep. It's perfect for frying little things in, small quantities. I actually really love this. It's super manageable. An entire 48 ounces of um, oil fit in it. And then I got this funnel cake mix at Aldi. And so I'm making it straight from the funnel, but I'm gonna give you guys a hint. Don't throw your funnel away because making funnel cake mix is super easy, the batter. So once you have the funnel cake that's mixed, that's why I bought this, is so I can pour it out. You'll easily be able to make more funnel cakes, powdered sugar to put on top, plate to put them on. Super easy. We're gonna get going. So we are starting with the mix of the funnel cake and then we'll have elephant ears and the homemade funnel cakes. I will share the timestamp below in the description so that if you want to go directly to one recipe or the other, you can. But we're going to get going. Here are the instructions that I'm following step by step exactly as they are listed in the Aldi directions. I am only having to open the packet of the powdery substance, which is mainly what is comprising the funnel cake. I add water, and then you'll see that as I'm mixing it, the mixture is a little thicker than I personally would like, so I'm taking the liberty to thin it out with just a little bit more water because I really want my funnel cake to pour easily. That is important. You want it to get out of the funnel cake funnel, otherwise you're going to be stuck with a lump. So once you get the batter nice and runny, now comes the fun part, making the funnel cakes. You literally get to kind of just feel like a kid making a mess because you're just pouring runny batter in and it is making these little streaks that come together in a lump. And while it looks kind of crazy and a little bit like worms, once you put the powdered sugar on, you just get these ooey gooey bits of crispy fluffy batter and you can see my son is devouring his. He loved it. We all love the Aldi homemade mix. But now we're moving on to my personal favorite elephant ears. I got this recipe from Facebook. It was one of the popular shared pictures. I saw it floating around. I stole it from a friend's um, her personal post that she shared of it and I've been using it ever since. I think I found it like five or six years ago but I am sharing it with you here. I will try to link to their Facebook page below, but my kids really like to make dough, and since elephant ears have a dough that you can play with with your hands, they all made their own elephant ears, and those were the first three that I baked. I didn't show you playing with their dough because that's not gonna help you in any way. They just enjoyed it. I this for 10 minutes. So I mentioned that we are letting that hot water sit with the yeast for 10 minutes, and now I am mixing the rest of the dough. I will give you the exact recipe again linked I will link to it on their Facebook page if I can find it and I will also leave a timestamp where you can freeze frame on your shot I will probably take the time to type it out below as well but you have warm milk shortening sugar salt baking powder a lot of different dry ingredients and I am mixing it with the milk and you dump that all into the yeast and warm water that sat for at least 10 minutes and you're going to gently kind of mix it all together. You don't want to, um, you know, over beat the yeast. You will 
if you use too hot of water or you work it too much you're going to kind of undo all of the work that it's done but the yeast is important to let it sit for a while before you use it and then you'll see what we will be letting this dough rise again again the yeast needs to do its thing but i added all the flour in and now i am mixing it i go kind of slow and gentle and then eventually i get my hands dirty it's funny because when i bake i often take my wedding ring off and it might be an entire week before I put it back on again because I never think of it unless I'm like in the shower or I'm out somewhere and I wish I had my wedding ring on. And that's when I notice I don't have it on. But I am someone that loves, loves, loves to knead dough. I don't know what it is, but if it's a bread or elephant ears or stromboli pizza dough, whatever, I love to knead dough. I think it is really fun. I love to get my hands in it and just see it go from kind of clumpy to this perfect round fluffy ball of dough. It's something that I absolutely love and I know a lot of people search for no kneading recipes, but not me. I love when I get to actually knead the dough and work it. So you put the dough down and you let it sit for an hour. You can see the massive difference between the little perfect ball that I set down and this spacious cratery thing it sat for an hour the yeast really was hard at work and now i get to cut it into 12 equal parts i decided to make my elephant ears um, into 1 12th this recipe calls for between 8 and 12 elephant ears and i wanted to make mine a little smaller the smaller size allows them to fit better into my fry daddy and that was important to me to use the little fry basket instead of a larger pan and you can see after I separate them and I put them into 12 individual balls that I end up taking them one by one as it's time to fry them and I spread them out into the shape of an elephant ear. It's basically just some flattened dough. Um, if you don't know these as elephant ears, you might know it as fried dough, which is a very accurate, very plain, succinct description of what it is. It's dough that you fry. And the dough itself is actually not very sweet. There's only um, a few tablespoons. I can't remember offhand while I'm editing this video how much sugar, but there's very little sugar actually in the recipe, so it's not a sweet dough necessarily. Mm, that's a perfect one. But it is so yummy. And so here I am adding cinnamon sugar. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that you can add butter or not have butter. You can kind of tailor it to your own specific needs. I 100% think these would be better with butter slider all over, but since frying, actually absorbs a lot of oil. I don't want to add more of an oily fat onto my elephant ears, so I just add cinnamon sugar when it is piping hot. But I do think that elephant ears would just go up one slight level better if you slathered it in butter and added the cinnamon sugar, but that's totally up to you. And now we're moving on to the homemade funnel cakes. So once again, I am using someone else's recipe. I'm just kind of giving you a visual tutorial of how to make funnel cake. So I will link that recipe below, but I'm mixing all my dry ingredients first. I'm going to get those nice and mixed and then move on to the liquid stuff in a separate bowl. You can see I did pow baking powder, flour, sugar, and salt. And then now I am breaking my eggs. I need to beat those a little bit before I mix them with some other ingredients. I want to get the yolk and the whites mixed together. Now I'm adding milk, just like the elephant ears. The funnel cake batter is made with milk within, but it is more liquidy than a, an elephant ear batter because elephant ears are more doughy and the funnel cake you just pour right into the oil. So they're very similar, but obviously the batter is a different consistency between one and the other. And here I am showing you that I am again making sure my dough is not only well mixed, but it is quite runny. I do want it to go through the funnel. After making this batch, I do wish that my batter was a little more runny than what I ended up coming up with. It came out slower than I wanted it to from the funnel. And I think overall it just added to a more thick funnel cake. And it tasted absolutely delicious. There was nothing wrong with it to say, but I would have liked my dough to be a little more on the airy side. And I think had I just thinned out the dough a little bit more, I could have achieved that. But I absolutely love watching these time-lapse fried videos. For whatever reason, I find it really soothing to watch the dough go from 
a liquid to a golden crisp. You can see I'm lining up my funnel cakes. We had friends over this evening where I made funnel cakes for everyone and they love them. My guests were very pleased. We like both the homemade version and the Aldi version pretty much the same. So what did you think, you guys? Will you try to make elephant ears yourself? I absolutely love making them at home and I am certain that if you try it, you can do the same thing. I have left a link to the exact recipe that I follow below. My videos just drum my videos demonstrating how I follow other recipes and then again I got the funnel cake mix from Aldi. It was less than three dollars and you just mix it with water and you use your own oil so that is an added cost but it's so easy. And then if you want fruit topping which in my opinion fruit topping on top of a funnel cake or an elephant ear is pure sin because why would you cover up that goodness? But, you know, you do you. We can still be friends if you put fruit on top of your fried goodies. But if you like this video, I hope you stick around because I love food. I love talking about food. I like to make food. I cook for my family almost three times a day, every single day of the week. We sit down, we have dinners together, and so the videos that I make are sharing with you my grocery hauls my, and my meal plans. I make a $10 dinner every single week and share that with you guys, how I feed my family of five for $10 or less. And then Wednesdays are kind of a catch-all. I can do any type of food video that I want, which is, so I hope you stick around for future videos. I would love to have you join me as a subscriber. It makes me jump for joy every single subscriber that I get. And I think that you should do that for me. And then go make an elephant here.